arms, Prince Wale Oyekoya. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Good morning. Mm. Over the years, we've been talking about um, uh, farmer heather crises. We've been talking about um, insecurities on our farms, etc., leading to food crises and food insecurity. Uh, what's your, how do you receive this news, you know, of the military, Nigerian military saying that, well, we want to be at the forefront of this to ensure that this planting season is peaceful and safe for our farmers? Well, it's a welcome idea, but with a mixed feelings. If you know how the numbers of farmers we have in the country, with the numbers of the soldiers we have, we already have enough problem in the Sambisa or in the Northeast, in the Northwest with all these banditries and the, and the Boko Harams are still there. But now for the military to be saying they are going to safeguard the security of farmers, I don't know how it's going to work because this thing has been going, even with the bus on your try it, it couldn't work. Good luck, Jonathan, try it, couldn't work. Even Buhari tried when they tried to send the military to some strategic areas of farmers. But how many farms or farm settlements are the military going to guide? And I have a mixed feeling, as I said. If this is the same military that wanted to safeguard the security of farmers, they themselves are culprits in the sense that we keep on talking of northeast, northwest. What about in the southwest? Recently was in December that even the same military that's supposed to guide the farmers are the one that came to Lagos State and dragged away some of these farmers. I'm talking over 100 farmers and took over the farm because they said the land belongs to them. The land that had been lying down for the past 50 years since 1974. If it is true that the government is really serious about safeguarding the security of farmers and food security in the country, it shouldn't be the military. If you go towards the, the talking, to Ekwe, as I'm talking right now. If you go towards the Eredo, all the same Ekwe region, you know that is why we have the concentration of our farmers. The military have taken over. Even the governor of the state have tried to get hold of these military men. That what is really going on? Why coming to Lagos and take all our farmlands? Even the land belongs to the military. There should be a system check between the state government and the federal government, not just to drag away the farmer, no notice. There was no notice given to any farmer. They just came overnight in, in hundreds of them and sent away all the farmers. So is it the same military are going to guide the farmer that we are talking about? As I'm talking right now, the governor of Lagos, they have tried all his possible best, even Jimmy Benson, that happened to be the chairman for the military in the, um, in the House of National Assembly. They have not got hold of, of, holding, of holding. We're talking about 100 farmers. We're talking about indirect employment in thousands that have been laying fallow. Well, the, 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 these are issues, you know, that are separate issues. That of um, the lands, you know, which the farmers in Lagos State in the southwest yes. are actually, you know, um, in work, you know uh, cultivating. Yes. But this in focus is the one in Plateau State, you know, due to the insecurity and all of that. Sure. So if you are saying that the military would not be able to do that. The military is not expected to do this, owing to you know, some happenings in different regions. Are you saying that there, it has to be someone else who will take over you know, the affairs of the farmers to ensure that there is peace and security in the land and on the farms? The military are not meant to safeguard the farmer. All over the world, there are something they call patrol, uh, the, the military patrol. It's not for the farmers, you understand? Yes, we understand the insecurity that is going on between the headers and the farmers. But if there's a general security in the whole country, the issue of military coming in to be the security for the farmer will not have come in. I think what needs to be done is that the military know what to do. The federal governments need to, they know what to do. But the, there's no way you will tell me that for the past almost 20 years that we keep on having the same security problem with the headers and farmers. It's very simple. Why can't you let most of these cattle be in the ranches? Anywhere in the world, there's ranches. Gone are the olden days that you just allow the cow to roam about the streets. We see them in Lagos that are supposed to be metropolitans. Not to talk of just. Most of these states that they invaded, they knew what they are doing, that during the dry season, they cannot get grass for their cow or for their animal. So what do they do next is to target the farmers. So the military, how many places are going to be at the same time? They have the area patrol that they can use and know where these people are coming from. And these people will not even strike during the days. I'm talking of the, of the, of the headers or all these 
and bandits, they come in the night. They take over the whole community. You understand? So what I'm trying indirectly is that let the government, now it's in the National Assembly that they wanted to pass the bill for the... Anti-open grazing law. Yeah, for the open grazing. We are in the 21st century. Why cow grazing around? I understand that the, the herders, they, they have a right to their, to their cattle. Their cattle need to eat. But there should be a way where you can find them. Even by the time you can find them to ranches, you will see that you, they will be more beefy. They be more robust than just roaming about. Gone are the days that we, we have to be. You remember in the olden days in the Lagos, once you see a cow coming, every, the whole, everybody will run away. It's still happening in some places. So, and you know that food security, the three things that the government need to provide, food security and shelters. And all these three things are lacking. There's no food for common man to eat. Go to the market, you see high cost of food production. The security is not there. The shelters is not there. Go look at the IDP. You pity these people if you go to the IDP. I was once there in, 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 in Bama, in, in, in Maiduguri. You pity these people. So the security is not there. The food is not there. So a lot of things need to be done. And a lot of persons have suggested the non-violent approach in resolving some of the crisis between uh, the farmers and the headers. But it seems that this has not brought as much, uh, you know, as much result as expected. But let's talk about how realistic this plan by the military is and how sustainable it will be in the long run, looking at the fact that we are in the wet season and farming uh, should have started now. Yes, definitely, as I said, this problem has been lingering on for, for so long. For military to come in now, I wouldn't rule it out. But how is it going to work? They have not brought it out. There have been so many policies on how to settle the issues of headers and the farmers. But the implementation is always the issue. We will sit down like this on the round table, let's do this. But until the right thing is being done, that ranches should be practiced in all states, not even in the all states, in all the local governments, all the 774 local governments, they can. We used to have um, uh, farm settlements. Farm settlements, cow will be somewhere, the farmer will be somewhere, and even the leftover of the grasses from the farmers, maybe when they cut the shrubs like the, like the maize or, or um, granite, can be given to farmers. We're supposed to cohabitate together. But the way they are doing that, they are sending away the farmers, and they are taking over because of the weapons they have. Most of the farmers, you see, they don't have any weapon to defend themselves. But you see all these headers with AK-47, where did they get it from? They cannot afford these guns. How did they get That is where the government needs to investigate. And if they can get some of this weapon out of these people, trust me, they don't have any power anymore. And who are the people financing these headers? Who are the people financing these kidnappers? You will see the, the way a man or some of these groups that are demanding millions of naira, you see the address, you know that definitely somebody is sending them, definitely some of this money is going somewhere. That is why the government really needs to look into. To me, military coming in right now is not the, it's not the issue. But no. we have a bigger issue to defend. I, are, you, are you sort of 